Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 25th version of Techno Crime Fighters pro broadcast, uh, Techno Crime Fighters Forum. Um, as you can see, I'm sitting alone today in my study, and I am speaking to everybody. This version of Techno Crime Fighters pro broadcast, uh, Techno Crime Fighters Forum. Um, one second, let me fix that problem. In my study, and I am speaking to everybody. This version of Okay, so here's what's been going on. From 11 o'clock this morning, we've been having massive technical issues. Um, so I finally got the program live on my channel, Homology Reports. I invited everybody. Um, people weren't able to sign on. So initially, I had problems with my computer. My PC, my PC was frozen. My browser was frozen. My email was frozen. Um, I had to reboot and redo the whole thing again and resend invites all over again. Um, but then everything seemed to go into a void and I did not hear back and I still have not heard back because I've been trying now literally for an hour. I've been sending emails out and looking for responses and hearing nothing, which really tells me that my email is being frozen. Either I'm not getting emails, uh, they are not getting emails. So the other members of the panel, um, Dr. Paul Markle, Mindy Erkin have been on standby this morning and waiting to join. Karen Stewart, NSA whistleblower, is uh, also expected to join us during this broadcast. Uh, Dr. Catherine Horton has been traveling, so she's not going to be here this morning. Um, Dr. Melissa Black may or may not join us. I'm not entirely certain because once again, we've had some interference in communications lately. So the only reason I'm doing this is because I wanted to get on camera today, this morning, say hello to every one of you who is out there, who's in the chat room and who has been waiting. Thank you for waiting. Thank you for hanging in there. Um, and to say, you know, this is what's been happening this morning. So this is the 25th panel that we are trying to run and it's been completely sabotaged. Say not completely because I'm still here, right? And I'm still speaking. So, okay, so almost completely sabotaged. Uh, to the extent that we can't really have a conversation or a panel, as we usually do. But there are two or three things that I wanted to report this morning, and so I decided I'll just go ahead and report them. One of them is um, a fabulous petition that um, NSA whistleblower Karen Stewart has created and put out, and you can find it on ipetitions.com. And, um, okay. So here's what the petition says, and I advise everyone to go Google it because I don't really know if I have the link currently, so I can't quite share screens currently, but I will try to do that in a minute and try to find it. But if you go to Google and type, take me off your fraudulent enemies list, that's the title of the petition. And um, Karen is asking everybody who's an American to sign this petition because what we're really doing is we are trying to send a message to all of the agencies, the security agencies, and the intelligence agencies out there who are running these programs of surveillance, whereby they are watchlisting and blacklisting people, throwing people on strange lists, such as terrorist watch lists, enemies lists, innocent Americans, nobody who's a terrorist, act who of upstanding integrity and morality and conscience in their communities, people who stand out, people who stand up to criminals in their community, people who speak out who are being watchlisted in, in these terrible ways, who are being wrongfully watchlisted, wrongfully blacklisted. So we are trying to send a message to these agencies that what, we are, what you are doing is wrong, what you are doing is fraudulent. The whole world is now aware that what you are doing is incredibly fraudulent. And we are putting a public petition out there to let you know that you need to take us off your fraudulent watch list and terrorist blacklists and enemies lists. So in addition to um, Karen produced with the petition, which basically lays out in plain English, the reality of what's going on with today's surveillance state, it's just become nothing but a burgeoning and exploding surveillance state security industry, where literally mercenaries are contracting like the FBI, with people like the DHS, which in itself has been found to be a private corporation and not 
Development Agency. And she has the information to prove it. And you can also visit the two podcasts that I did um, on Real Talk with Ahmed Adani and Midge Mattis and Karen Stewart, where we explored the whole reality of these um, agencies all actually being nothing but corporations and all of their affiliations with other corporations and other people who are providing services, the services of security, weapons testing, and weapons operation on Americans. So, um, in addition to talking about that, the whole notion of how we are really talking about a private security industry, which is helping to assault everyday Americans, upstanding Americans, outstanding Americans. In addition to all of that, Karen has done the incredible service to all of us in this country of spelling out the exact US codes that they are trespassing on by doing this to Americans. So this is not normal surveillance. This is not legitimate surveillance. This is not acceptable surveillance. This is the establishment of a criminal racketeering industry. And the people who suffer the most are the people of this country whom these agencies are supposed to be protecting. So that's the gist of that petition, but I do advise that everybody go and read the wonderful text that she has on there and see all of the uh, information on the US law that's being contravened with these programs. And please sign this petition. If you are targeted in this country, if you've been assaulted in any way, if you're being watchlisted, if you are experiencing any kind of stalking, surveillance, if you are exp experiencing electromagnetic signals in your body, which is all part of what they are hiding now as electronic and biometric surveillance, using surveillance radar, using military radar tracking weapons, please sign this petition. Please join us. Please send a message. Please add your voice to, the, to all of ours as we speak out to everybody and demand that these programs, these incredibly legitimate and incredibly horrifying programs using covert radiation weapons, as we ask for these to be entered. So I wanted to talk about that petition. The second thing I wanted to remind people again is we are working on a notice to humanity using energy and neurological and biological weapons. This petition will be published on my website. I had hoped to do it this morning, but again, I've been experiencing PC issues all morning, so I was unable to post it. I will post it. I'll try to do it by the end of the day today. Um, I, I want to post actually both Karen's petition and the notification of crimes against humanity on my website, because literally we are at a point of crisis in America and in the whole world. We are at a point of crisis. Civil society has broken down utterly. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Paul. Hi, Hi. Lydia. I'm so glad you're here. So I decided to just do the broadcast, to just start talking about Karen's petition. And, um, you know, I was just going to, I was just talking about the breakdown in civil society that we are currently experiencing as a result of which electromagnetic weapons are being used on citizens covertly in every country in the world, used um, in criminal ways to enact crimes of rape, sexual assault, physical assault on the bodies of humans, of humanity to stand up and speak out. Because intelligence agencies and security agencies are running amok on grounds of secrecy today. And we need to speak out. So in any case, um, Paul, what happened? I hope you, how did you get in here? Did you, did you use that link? Yes. Yes, we used your link. We got in. Are we live? Yeah, it looks like we're, we're live. We're Techn live, we're live. Officially, it's technical, Techno Crime Fighters 26, if, you want, if we want to call it, it that. 20. Oh, I thought it was 25. It is 25. It is 25, you're yeah. correct. I'm wrong. Oh, okay. Okay. I wrote it down. <laughs> um, we're a little 
they, the uh, intelligence community and Google and Facebook and YouTube and all those are working full time to try to sabotage this effort that we have going. And uh, they've given us a speed bump this week, but they're certainly not going to stop uh, what's happening here and the uncovering of what's going on. Um, we might be joined later by Karen. We said she might be able to get back in. Catherine's traveling and Millicent, uh, Millicent, I don't know what the story on her is. Do you know whether Millicent might? I don't, I don't know either, um, Paul, because I did not hear from her last night or this morning. I'm not too certain what the story with Millicent is. I hope she's okay. Um, I had hoped that she would be here, you know. But, um, I did send her invites this morning. Okay. I should tell you, I started the broadcast a little bit before, and I kind of explained to everybody what really has been happening. You know, my PC has been massively frozen, and I kept sending well, you guys emails, well, and I figured you weren't getting them because I don't see any action. So. <laughs> well, we, well, we were while you were on, we were exploring other platforms, and we uploaded. We we sent. Uh, we uploaded last week's Techno Crime Fighters to Steam it. Oh, brilliant. So it's on that platform. It's going to be on DTube too. We're figuring that out now. Uh, what else is right. going on? We're going to find Karen sent me a bunch of other communication. Uh, I don't know what they are. They're like Google Hangouts. Things okay. we can use. We're going to explore all those this week. So we're going to have to get away from Google as much as we can because. Google is running the CIA. They're all, they're all connected. Yeah. That, you know, so yeah. we, we're not going to be able to use their platform to fight them, I guess. So uh, No, and it's, like, it's very interesting because um, so far we've actually been able to use Google Hangouts, and all of a sudden now they're doing some major massive interference and sabotage. So I'm not sure what that's all about because it seems to me, I mean, I, I understand CIA is running Google, right? Uh, and running Google Hangouts. But it seems to me that they are attempting to maintain some kind of facade of freedom of speech in this country. You know what I mean? Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. to some extent, we've been able to use Hangouts to express ourselves, you know. Well, I don't think it's because of freedom of speech. I think it's because they want to know what's going on with us. And oh, so I, I think they... I think they know what's going on with us, and they don't like it. Okay. So uh, that's enough for you, uh, Paul Marco and Ramola and Mindy. <laughs> enough of that free speech for you guys. You can interfere uh, with their stuff. OK, so yeah, yeah that puts it in context. It's entirely possible. Yeah. I think it's there's like that. It, right. It's like think, letting the prisoners of Guantanamo out into the yard for a little walk, and then yeah. roping them back in. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but they. <laughs> but what's happening is, see, they have a big problem because there's a mass awakening, and they can't stop it. They're going to try to control it through censoring YouTube, but that that doesn't help. We just move to another platform, and then there's free platforms, and they're going to have to shut down. I mean, they're going to they have a mess. Yeah, and this is just you know, the first. Go ahead. I would love as well to find a different platform because right now I started this channel on, you know, YouTube. Um, but I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed with what's going on because I've, I've experienced so much sabotage recently every time I try to do a podcast. So if you guys find a better way to do this, you know, to live stream and to put it on, um, not through Hangouts. We're going to be looking. Right. Please let We're me know. We're going to be looking. I yeah, I was, so um, in, I was investigating open broadcasting software with Ahmed a little while ago, OBS. So maybe that's something we can do. OBS. So it's open source, it's open broadcasting software, yeah. Great. Well, that's our job. Find new platforms and other ways to, other ways to operate so we can leave mm -hmm. Google behind. I was Absolutely. writing the other day, just journaling, and I wrote the word Google down, and it creeped me out because it felt like two eyes looking at me when I saw the word written. You know, it feels like such a magic bell yeah. to see that word written. 
Yeah. It's very true. I mean, they've signed off that successfully now. I think we've all figured out who's really running Google. So, and with all the stuff about, you know, Google and Facebook and YouTube coming right out and saying they're going to censor quote unquote fake news sites. What a joke, right? I mean, they, they are the fake news sites. They are the fake well, news Well, mainstream. Uh, also, the thing about yeah. Google, uh, you've listened to Harold uh, Kotzweller. Yes, he's, I have. Uh, yeah. The he talks guy. about black. Yeah. Well, he talks about black goo. Oh, black goo. Yes, I've heard that. Yeah. Google. Ah. Google. There. It's very true. Exactly. Yeah. Goo for Google. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So. It's the black goo. Goo for Google. It's the black goo, <laughs> and. Uh, Making googly eyes at us. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, I wanted to spend a little time, since we do have an audience for these Techno Crime Fighter forums, to let Mindy talk about uh, what she's been doing with the uh, with the portal. Oh, wonderful. Yes, the portal. Do update us, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so okay. we've been trying to push the portal and get people onto the portal. And now I'm getting them in the proper categories and it's getting to be a storehouse of information. Let me yeah. go. Shall I just, you know. I'll see if I can share the screen? I don't know if I can, but let me give it a try. Share. Share. Did you get the right one? You are screen sharing. Okay. Well, you, can you, you see didn't it? have it on the right I do yeah. see it, yes. You see oh, it? Oh, she sees it. How come I can't see it? I can't see it. I think you're screen sharing. Am I, what do you see? Do you see the Pinecone Utopia portal? Yes, I do see it. You know, what happens is the camera shifts from you to the screen. So oh, it's okay. The screen that I'm seeing. Oh, now let's yeah. see it. Okay. Oh, I see. That's why we're not Oh, good. Seeing and I wonder more. if I can. All right. So, well, I, I have, we have had so much, so many contributions from so many wonderful people sending us modalities that they use that work for them and those have gone into our research category and i've let's see if it'll oh yeah it will let me show um you can see that i've added about eight new ones and i went back in and added new information into some of the old ones for example um listening to frequencies to break the brain entrapment and Pamela's been sending us updates on um, um, as, as she works with it, new things that are working. So you can see here I've added that in. So if you've already been, go back and look again. And then at the bottom, there is an area down here where you can add your own comment and other people are writing in to say what's working for them. So it's a really great resource to try some of these new techniques and see if they're working for you. And then the other thing that's new is I've added a shielding category so we can put, these just weren't fitting into the way we had it originally set up. So now we have this where people are writing in with things that are working for them for shielding. And the other new thing on there is this general discussion from the community. And there's some really great stuff in here. We've got some, some wonderful people writing in with lots of content that's um, useful. So those are all new on the portal. And what else did I, I wanted to mention? Oh, if you want to contribute, there are a couple of ways that you can do it. For example, um, if you have a modality that's working for you, you can use the contact us form and um, just put it in an email to us and we'll post it under the research category. Or you can use um, any of the comment sections to add to what's already there. And lastly, I want to say that if you submit things to the portal but prefer to remain anonymous, please just say in your uh, 
in your comment to us when you contact us that not to use your name or your email and we'll leave that out. For now, I've been putting them in um, and if there's a problem with that, just let us know and we can remove it. That's basically it. I, I, I want to invite people to contribute because it's a because it's a, how it's, a you say? it's a resource for all of us and we will gather the data from it and try to present it in a um, in a readable fashion and you know we'll go from there for now we're just compiling everything and thanks everybody for being so patient with me because it's been mm -hmm. a couple of weeks since I've been able to to put the content up. Right. All right, so now. Also, would you leave, leave, it, that, leave it on there now? Okay. Uh, also, um, the idea of this was to not only create a resource uh, for people to use these things, and I really want to encourage you using them because otherwise you're stuck with us against them. You're stuck in the duality of, of, the, of the fight. And uh, any of these techniques will give you a different perspective. So uh, use it as a resource. Uh, try some things. If you try them for a week and they don't work, that's not a good trial. You might have to trial one for six months or even a year. And all of a sudden, you'll be starting to get some maybe. Also, uh, I'd like all of you people who are really into this, like I know Ramola is and Catherine, the other crime fighters. and. Also, Brian, too, who's, who I just discovered is a contributor to this. If we can find a hypothesis, if you read through and you can think of a hypothesis, that means something that might be consistent or it seems that when we do this, it seems to do that. Or if you can see it in the aggregate and look for a hypothesis, if you could write a hypothesis, this isn't urgent because I, we might really have enough data to do this. And then we can decide how to test our hypothesis. Uh, that way we might really get some scientific information on how to uh, oppose it in this way. So did that make sense, Ramona? Oh, do you mean, uh, Paul, like every time you find a technique that works for you, you... Um write it down as a possible hypothesis no i was thinking that we have three let's say we have three or four things that people do that have a tendency to move them over to a higher vibration okay. how does this higher vibration affect the perps how does that uh, is it is there a quick way to get us to a high vibration and does that high, is it the high vibration that actually works? Is it the, uh, or is it uh, somehow shielding yourself by focusing on something? It, does that, is that a more, a more uh, useful technique? What about the technique that I just saw flash by uh, on the uh, changing the, the hertz of music? Um, with music. Yeah. It's a more harmonic way of listening to music that's more in touch with that's a um, oh, it's here. The, the root vibration of the earth. I mean, that's putting ourselves in, I mean, I mean how do these things work? What's the underlying uh, theory on how it would work? And do several of these have that same mechanism so we can take that mechanism and and figure out a way to test it. I think that's how, you know, I'm not a scientist, but uh, I have written a dissertation and I know kind of know how science works. So if we can, right now it's just a collection of different ideas that people can use. And, uh, but I think we're gonna see trends and patterns. And from the trends and patterns, can we uh, launch a hypothesis? Uh, oh, I see. Okay, so actually embark on some of that scientific thinking to try to figure out how exactly these uh, methodologies and techniques are actually working. Right, right, because I think these things are going to work. 
I think there's going to be ways of behaving or ways to uh, adjust your mind that's going to um, give you give you some shielding or 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 actually do something. So that's after we collect it. Right now, it's a beautiful collection. It's really getting rich uh, with a lot of really good ideas. A lot of them I've heard of. Some of them I, I couldn't even imagine. Uh, they seem to be working. They're giving us a little hint of the type of uh, program they're in because not everybody's in the same program. Uh, so uh, certain things might work at, uh, as opposed to other things for different types of programs. So just anything we can find out from this research, uh, how this is happening. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep to this, go ahead. I was going to say, do you want to talk about the pitfalls of using some of these modalities? Like meditation? Well, no, no. It's all, every, everything, everything in here can be sabotaged, I suppose. And so when you're practicing a technique, you have to really uh, be sort of centered in yourself. Uh, you can surround yourself with a protective bubble. You can, there are a lot of different shielding techniques because some of these do open you up to outside influences that could be that could be dangerous. I mean, I like to use Vipassana meditation because I've done it for years. I know that technique. It's really helped me do a lot of stuff. But I really know that I need to clear my mind. And uh, if I'm, uh, how can I say, very disgruntled, and I go into that meditational state, it's not going to help me. So I really need to shield myself. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Okay. Should awesome. I stop sharing the screen now? No, keep it going. Okay. Okay. Also, I'd just like to remind you, and also remind Vermola that we do have this Sunday night podcast called Surfing the Portal that she's invited to whenever she gets a chance. Uh, oh, thank you. I missed the last one. Uh, well, I've had accolades on on our on the one we did together. Uh, really? Oh, wonderful! Got a close friend who was who was totally amazed with your input, and uh, I could probably. But say I'm so glad it happened. Yeah, that was such a fun uh, conversation, Paul. <laughs> right. Well, thank you very much. But we do it every Sunday night just to keep. The reason I want to do it is to keep interest in the portal. The portal's not going to dry up and go away. That portal's going to stay there, and that's going to be a strong resource for us. So it's not going to go away, and we're going to talk about it every Sunday night. I will. We're going to try to get a guest on or two every time. Uh, and uh, what I've been ending with is a little reframing. Uh, I think that for a lot of us, education now is coming by itself. When you when you decided to be open minded about what's happening with you, and a lot of the TIs that I call selected individuals are because they're in pain. You want to know the truth when you're in pain. So I think a lot of that we have some real open minds. And when you open your mind, education comes to you. Uh, you you see more than you did before. And it's really not necessary that a bunch of people like myself, High Impact Flicks, CGI Report, Call for an Uprising 2, some of these channels have been pumping out information. And it's what I call it education. I think when you open your mind, the education is going to come to you and you're going to keep, you're like a sponge. And the education comes. I think the next piece is development. Now that we know what's going on and we can see the bad guys, we know who they are, we know the lineage, we, we know what's happening. Now let's, let's, get in turn, let's think about ways we can develop different ways to think about them that will enable us. How can we move on to the next stage in this awakening? Uh, and try to get past some of the cul-de-sacs that they've set in place for us. And by cul-de-sacs, I mean traps. Um, 
a lot of the new age concepts are traps. A lot of the Christian concepts, a lot of the different churches are traps. A lot of the different, uh, they've just set up. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of uh, what they call uh, alternative uh, news services that are traps. Uh, I'll, I'll name one, uh, the, uh, the InfoWars channel. In hmm. my mind, the InfoWars channel is going to keep you in the do loop of Trump against the deep state and uh, uh, Trump against the no North Korea. Well, North Korea is about as big as Mississippi. Um, the federal government has said we're going to be able to control the weather by 2025. And if you look at the two recent hurricanes, you know that they can control the weather. So if they were really worried about North Korea, I think they'd flood it out. They could easily do it. Look what they did to California a couple of years she wants ago. Us to stop but anyway, so I think that that particular channel keeps you in that particular cul-de-sac. And there's there are others too. I can I could point them out. They keep you in a do loop that you can't get out of. So what I do in the last well, it's been like a half hour, the last half hour, twenty minutes or so. I'll talk about different ways to reconceptualize it that might give you some ideas to think about that'll, that might propel you into different frames of thinking. And I, I don't want to corrupt anybody's beliefs, but I think, uh, you know, what the Oscar Wilde said, uh, an unexamined life isn't worth living. And so I think we're so uh, rich now in the information that we have Let's take the information and use it to uh, break through no, new levels of awareness, new ways of looking at this thing, and uh, perhaps new ways of climbing out of this little matrix they have us running around in. So anyway, that was my thing about the portal. We're going to keep it going as long as we can. Uh, our platform seems to not mind what we put on it. Uh, so far, they're good. We will keep a backup, right? Can we keep a backup? Of the portal? Yeah. We'll try to figure out how to keep a backup I've of the portal in case they didn't in, the, in our email. Because we did have a website taken down because we did something that the web sheriff didn't like. So we lost wow. the whole website. Oh, um, they can disappear in an instant. And they did disappear in an instant. And they don't allow you access in to retrieve anything you put on there. So we really need to. That's awful. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It was devastating when that happened, but it was a blessing in disguise because I start. I made a new website, and it was much better than the old one. It's just that all the archives of old information are gone. Oh, but my. that's okay. We have to let yeah. go sometime. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, the great power of what we are doing and what you are doing and what you are really setting an example for all of us, really, both of you, Paul and Mindy, is that you don't okay. stop, you know, you don't stop and you just move straight ahead and you keep doing what you're doing. And that's, you know, that tenacity and that persistence, that's power. Thanks. Also, since it's open source, anybody can download it. Just feel free to download all the stuff from that website and keep it. Um, you know, this is open source. This is the opposite of secrecy. Exactly. I love it. I love uh, the opposite of secrecy, absolute transparency, absolute candor, and absolute openness. You know, so anyone and everyone can join in the circle, which is increasingly becoming more and more. Um, I really wanted to say thank you for that, for your. Um, um, conversation right now on surfing the portal. I think what you did was you kind of shifted the focus from just focusing on these ghastly things that these intelligence and uh, military and security agencies are doing against populations, reshaping, as you said, reframing, uh, reshaping the focus to to move towards more inspiring things, you know, that all of us can get engaged in and learn about and do ourselves. It's to literally move um, individually to a higher state of vibration. So we're not in the state of stress, you know, stress 
induced by the chaotic events around us, the chaotic news from the mainstream media, mm -hmm. and uh, now the targeting and the electronic surveillance as well. It just induces stress and trauma. But you're kind of showing as a way to kind of, as you say, you know, kind of tunnel through the matrix and um, beat that stress and trauma. Yeah, actually, you uh, gave us a very inspiring technique when you were on with me a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. about your mental focus uh, really irritating your perps. And I think that was inspiring. Apparently, it irritates them. Yeah, I was Why should it too. be any of your business what I'm doing in my backyard? You know what I mean? I'm sitting in my backyard <laughs> looking at the flowers. Yes. But apparently it is. Apparently they've got uh, planes, helicopters, drones, and cars to zoom right around and around, uh, around me like rats, you know, based on what I do. So right. if that's what they want to do with their time and with taxpayer money, with American taxpayer money. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, people should should start to stand up and say, what are you doing with my tax dollars? And I won't exactly. have it. And stop exactly. paying the tax dollars for this kind of harassment, right? I mean, it is. obviously you're very special. They care what you do 24 seven and they, they're watching and keeping records. So- They're yeah. keeping records, satellite imagery kind of, Honing in on me, sitting in my backyard with a book. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, the best you could do is just have them be completely bored, right? <laughs> They'll get tired of watching you. Oh, they I mean, never get tired, apparently. They're so focused on me. <laughs> I have oh, to tell you this. Go ahead. I have to tell you, though, Mindy, so last, um, well, just the previous Sunday, from the panel and also Sherry Ganeri, whose interview is on my website, you know, the Alzheimer's advocate, um, who has a very interesting and a very tragic story to relay to the world. Um, well, you know, it's, a, it's, to it's about sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so well, I didn't do a podcast with her. I did a print interview, and that interview is on the web, uh, is on the Everyday Concern Citizen. But I will do a podcast with her shortly. She is an incredible okay. person, an incredible woman with a great voice. And I would love for her to come on Technocrime sometime and join us and speak out because her voice is powerful. Ask that Good very job. potent question, you know, what are they doing with taxpayer money? They are taking my money that I give in taxes and they are using it to covertly implant me and to assault me with radiation. And they are having people around me engage in this. So mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. kind of world have we come to when that kind of thing is possible? She asked mm -hmm. that question. And so in any case, the four of us got together. It was Catherine, Horton, um, myself, and Sherry Gunnery. She asked on how targeting, engaging in acts of sexual assault, rape, and sex trafficking, and calling it surveillance. So this podcast is both mm -hmm. on my channel and I've put it on my, I just recently posted it at my home page as well on Everyday Concerned Citizen. But I wanted to mention that today, you know, because it was kind of powerful for four of us women to get together, talk about what is going on with the use of these radiation mm -hmm. weapons. Mm -hmm. You know, what these guys in security and intel agencies are actually doing are actually paying others to do for them. Because, you know, it's not, um, what's his name, John Brennan and James Clapper and Mike Pompeo and uh, James Comey and whoever the new guy is, Jeff Sessions, etc. They are not actually pulling the trigger and raping women. But they have hired people. They've wor they're working with InfraGuard, with Neighborhood Citizens Watch, Neighborhood Watch, and various security companies, you know, working with the NSA, working with the FBI working with local law enforcement, to use radiation weaponry. Because on this particular panel is women. They're using radiation weaponry on women, and they're literally raping women, you know? So they are encouraging, and they're paying people to rape women using radiation weapons, to sexually assault women, to uh, assault them in their urino and genital areas so that they become incontinent when they're walking about. <sighs> You know, when they're just going about their business, taking their child to school or going to a dentist appointment. 
sitting in the dentist chair, they are being assaulted with these radiation weapons. Oh, so, the, so to get together and to talk openly about it, I think is a powerful, powerful thing to do. I was so glad to make this particular broadcast, the podcast mm -hmm. rather. And, you know, so we put it out there and I want to ask everyone to spread it far and wide. Please spread it far and wide because this is the okay. truth about what these guys are doing. And Americans need to know about it. Americans need to wake up. Sure. Is this on Ramola D channel? Yes. Ramola D Ramola reports. Report. Yes. It's, um, I, think, I will send you the link, but I think it's report number 16, if I'm not mis mistaken. Um, what I want you to do is encourage. I want to encourage everybody to subscribe. She does one or two of these every week, and they seem to be bombshell. So, you know, this is news. Uh, what Trump's doing is not news. What, what, what they're doing with conventional weapons in the Middle East is not news. What's news is how they're controlling the population with directed energy weapons, how they're raping women in their own homes. Uh, it's, it's, it's horrible. It's anyway. dreadful, and you know, they're doing it to men too. And my hope next is to get a group of men to sit together and talk with me about. I think that's a really good idea because I see in the chat room, there are there are men in the chat room, and they, and I've watched while while the panel has talked about these things, how the men respond, and and yes, it is happening to them. And I think there, I remember last one I watched, they were saying this thing with the urination is happening also to the men. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, and they're, they're ramping up their sex drive, too, was another comment I remember reading. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, we were dealing with a sex cult, right? So, so yeah. it makes sense to me that this is the kind of targeting they're doing because they're perverted sadists, really. I'm, and it's almost like another trafficking program that, you know, they're using to get their kicks. Because they, they're so far beyond humanity that, you know, what they're doing is just unconscionable. And people should know because this is just the front line. This is just the beta test before it gets turned on everyone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether you're in the program now or not, doesn't mean that you won't be at some point. Because yeah. this is, unless it gets stopped. And... The the only way to really stop this, and we've talked we talked about this on the broadcast. We talked about uh, Yogananda's book, mm -hmm. autobiography of a yoga, and how some of the characters described in described in that book could not be targeted because they can Correct. put their mind right out of it and not be affected by it. Now, I think sexually. I think it may be difficult, but you should be able to get your mind so that you're, uh, God knows I had plenty of dates where they were able to put them put sex out of their minds. But you know what I mean? You should be, uh, there should be ways to focus on something other than that so that that becomes less and less effective going forward. I don't, you know, I'm not saying that this is a panacea. Mm -hmm. Right, but, right. Especially for right now, there are people being targeted so badly that um, finding any kind of methodology to help them, I think, is a fantastic thing to do in itself, you know. And in the kind of uh, things that you're talking about in Surfing the Portal that we talked about, you know, conscious breathing, mindful breathing, right. connecting with nature, just to take your focus away from that trauma that you're experiencing on a daily basis. You know, and, and I think in terms of something specific like incontinence, um, it may be worth working on getting in touch with um, controlling that area. You know, there are certain things like your breathing that goes automatically, but you can control it. Uh, maybe in that area, there might be some uh, ways to get in touch with and really get uh, I, I, I would probably start off with getting in touch with the functioning of it, 
In other words, really focusing on when you when you're urinating and focusing on what it exactly feels like when you stop. What are the muscles? How does it change? Mm -hmm. And then maybe being able to uh, control it yourself because you should be able to control your body. I mean, there have been people uh, in different uh, uh, practices, Buddhist practices. I mean, they can control their body temperature to the point where I've seen videos of them where they've gone into, oh, they've got They've gone up to the Himalayas, and they were, they're wearing a, a thin, looks like a, uh, a, 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 a little cloth. towel. Yeah. A loincloth. And they, they sleep in the snow, they get up, they function perfectly well. It's because they're in control of these bodily functions. Now, you know, these guys have spent lifetimes doing this. They have, and I would actually make a kind of a distinction, Paul. I, I mean, I do think on the one hand, yes, these learning these techniques and practicing them is great. But also, I think we should recognize that, you know, these guys have indeed spent lifetimes. We are masters of this stuff. We know how to Absolutely. Do. Absolutely. But we have a very highly motivated audience. Mm. It's not just people running around and they have a, we have a very highly motivated audience to stop being affected by them. If we could get a hundred people that are listening to these forums or going to the portal that had effective techniques, I think it would throw a real monkey wrench into what mm -hmm. they're going to do. Now, they, you know, they modify. Would. It would, but you know, um, Paul, I think even talking about it is going to throw a monkey wrench into it. And my whole thing right now, because I can tell you, I am hearing stories from so many people that are absolutely extraordinary to, you know, put some of these stories out there based on the extent to which they are ready to publicize. Um, so one of the things I can tell you, because I've been hearing about it, is about biorobotizing. It's about complete takeover of the human body. Neurotype. Go say it again, Ramona. They cracked you up. Oh, did they really? Interesting. Yeah. So, but it's very sad for them because I'm going to keep talking about this. They're going to have to shut me up then permanently if they want, want me to stop talking about biorobotizing. So one of the big things that I am going to be experiencing is biorobotizing. This is the complete takeover of the human body. This is the complete takeover of the human body through neurotech. You know, through completely taking over different parts of the brain. And this is where the kind of thing that Brian Tew has talked about comes in and what uh, Robert Duncan talks about. Mind hiving, EEG cloning, EEG heterodyning. Where your brain waves, somebody else, and then replayed into somebody else's mind. So they become clones of you. They're taking your brain waves and trying to put brain. So those guys are becoming your clones. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then they heterodyne. They mix that guy's brain waves. And they heterodyne. So they mix it up. That's heterodyning. And then they put that guy's brain waves into your brain in some kind of blended uh, mechanism of blending the, the brain waves. So they're sending other people's brain waves into your head and taking your brain waves and putting it into other people's heads. So in the process, what they're able to do is influence how your brain works. So this is how they enter the brain and they begin to influence how your brain works. So your brain is being seen as nothing but a computer. Mm -hmm. That can be influenced with the right what? with the right programming. Yeah, let, let me let me Can just throw this into the mix. Um, um, you have a physical brain that, in my mind, is a, a, a subset of your consciousness. You have individual consciousness. Your brain is a subset of that. Your brain contains stuff like your beliefs, uh, your responses, and, and, and those types of things. But is that brain you? The brain is Ramola, but is it your consciousness? In other words, they might claim that they're capturing your consciousness, but I don't believe that they are. I believe they can map your brain 
but I don't think they can get a handle on your consciousness. And you are your consciousness. I would, I wanted to talk about on the portal a little I bit. I love the idea. How much would you rather I saved it for that? Let me give a teaser. Uh, are you uh, are you your belief systems? Are you your reactions? I'm not sure you are. I'm not sure when you pass away, you maintain your belief wardrobe. I call it a wardrobe because I think it's given to you. You put it on like like a set of clothing, and conceptually, we can change. Uh, or we can change our beliefs. Actually, it's very difficult because we have a thing called an ego that holds on to that belief like it were, well, it's, it's what they need to relate to the world. So without that belief wardrobe, they can't relate. But I think after you pass, the, your belief wardrobe is no longer relevant. Uh, your feeling about men is no longer relevant. You might be in line to do a to do a, if you believe in successive lives as a man, or you're no longer going to be a woman. I mean, so is that belief wardrobe relevant? I think what happens is it dissolves away. And what and all these beliefs and these responses that aren't you disappear. So they can control that brain as much as you can control it. But you're not that brain. That brain is your history, your, your remembrances, uh, your uh, reactions, your thoughts about things, your feelings about dogs. and so, It's all collected in your brain. I mean, they can find even where it is now in your brain. But I don't think they have access at all to your consciousness, which is actually what you are. So I think uh, the trick is to try to control your brain as much as you can with these implants. I, I, you know, I don't know. This is totally uncharted territory. How much can even an even an adept yoga uh, deal with chips in his brain I'm, or her brain? I'm not sure how that would go, but I know that there's you beyond what they can touch, and. Uh, Seeing yourself as that might be a different way to conceptualize and and keep you when when you become that. I don't know whether they can track it. In other words, when you're enjoying your flower, remember we talked about this, and you're really into that. Yeah, I think you're just totally by bypassing your brain and you're going straight into whatever Romola really is. And you're in touch with that. So the brain, that's why it frustrates them, because you're not, you're, you're not playing the game. You're not giving them uh, stuff to chart and stuff to map. They're not learning what, like you, what, you what you're supposed glove. to do. It's like Stay pulling yourself out of the glove, yeah. Uh, okay, that's a great analogy. So, yeah, so maybe... Uh, Watching yourself from a higher perspective so that you... Your higher self, the real you, is actually watching you as Ramola doing what Ramola does. But you're not mm -hmm. in that. You're watching yourself operate, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah, I do. It's, I, it's, it's just I, taking I, an observer. The observer yeah. point of view. Yeah. I, I have noticed that they do um, freak out when I do do that, when I do conscious breathing or I'm totally engaged. And so... Maybe that's exactly what's going on. Well, I think so. I think this different perspective is, I know when, uh, when Millicent and I started talking about uh, what to do, I, I, I asked her, I said, it might be helpful to write a diary in third person. Oh, yeah. That way you're getting used to watching yourself mm -hmm. do that. And also, for her, since she's got a full-time uh, her. So, so, yeah. Uh, right. Watching Molson react to that. And when you can get yourself in that, mm -hmm. that more removed position, you have more uh, options, behavioral options. 
because you're not just mm -hmm. responding the way you would from this smaller person you mm -hmm. you might be uh responding rather than reacting yes i think it's a lovely from... idea and i'd like to, yeah i think I'd it's like a lovely idea, idea too. i do and i think actually i should do a podcast with you on the subject maybe both of you on the subject because i can tell you from what people tell me the stories that they tell me you know about how they're being um hit and how the implants are being activated that are essentially creating pain signals in your body. The people to whom this has been done, the EEG cloning and mind hiving, and who are getting synthetic telepathy and V2K constantly in their heads, are most tormented. Because some of them, the cases are so advanced that literally um, their arms and legs are being moved without volition, without their volition. Okay, so this is what the, that neurotic can do. We're talking about the physical plane, the physical material plane, how it affects the brain, and how their the arms and legs are being moved. So I'm working on one story now with one person, and it's going to blow you away when you read this person's interview. It's very articulate, highly educated, very articulate, and is able to describe it very cleanly and clearly. And I think his, his interview is going to land like a bombshell on the world. No, no, no what bio-robotizing is all about. Yeah. It's all about. Um, but he has told me that he literally cannot um, resist. He says, you know, meditation, yoga, all of that is great, but you know, that stuff doesn't affect me. I cannot resist when I am moved. I'm picked up from my chair. I'm literally, this clone enters my body, enters my brain, and makes me walk, moves my arms, moves my legs, and makes me walk. Now, can you imagine this? Can, can any one of us as human beings imagine this? This is outrageous, but this is exactly what this technology can do and is doing. And this is why, Mindy, as you say, the secrecy. We've got to blow the secrecy out of the water. We've got to let humanity know this is the technology that they are developing. And they are using TIs to develop this technology. And this is why they're condemning TIs as paranoid and delusional media. Via people like the New York Times, I might add, you know, editors of the New York Times are complicit in this. Um, various other journalists, of course. And, you know, psychiatrists, law enforcement, they're all participating in covering up this supreme crime against humanity, the complete takeover of the human brain and the complete takeover of the human body. This is the crime that they are seeking to hide. And, you know, as you said, uh, Mindy, as well, right now it's just a close bunch of TIs around the world. But if they have this tech, what does it tell you? They can use it on anyone at any time. Active shooters, no problem. Stabber needed at this in this location, no problem. I've got a Manchurian over here. He lives at this address. Let's just mm -hmm. the attacks on him so that tomorrow he goes out and shoots people in a library or a gym or a cafe. And then we've got the FBI and the police to come out and lock him up, or if he's alive still, or shoot him up, you know. So um, th that's what's going on. That's what's going on. Manchurians are being created. Manchurian candidates are being created for this technology. Right. Absolutely. What they want to do, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer, before he would, before he would totally kill his victims, he would drill holes in their head, and he yeah. would dump acid to get rid of the, uh, get rid of the brain. Well, but that's what. Think but, about but it. That's, that's the ruling class. That's the ruling class. They're psychopaths. They're the same as him. Actually, I'm writing, I've written a chapter in a, in a book that I'm, I want you to read. Uh, but but it's, all, it's all about making meat puppets. Yeah. Because I think here's the bottom line. In 1666, there was a man named Sebastian Sevi, Jewish man in the Middle East. And... Uh, he reasoned that God would return when either did I tell you this? Am I'm I sorry. Redundant? That he that he would uh, he wanted to summon God to come back to the earth. Okay. Oh wow. God with inside this little this world of duality. He wanted to, and he reasoned that god apparently according to one of their texts which could be the talmud who knows what they're working from mm -hmm. but god would return when either everybody was all good or everybody was all evil 
And Sebastian Seti reasoned that nobody will always be good. There's too, too, too much temptation, especially sexual temptation. So his purpose was to make sure that everybody was bad. Oh, wow. And uh, his lineage goes down through Jacob Frank. Jacob Frank made an, an alliance with Weisskopf and uh, Roth, uh, the Rothschilds uh, to create this new world order. They created the Illuminati together. Now, the whole idea is to make everybody evil. And you, Ramola, aren't evil enough for them. So they really need to corrupt you, to take you over. They want to make you a meat puppet. So you'll do the evil things that they can. And what it does, it ends duality. See, the problem is the duality, us against them. And no matter how you slice it, it's always against them. I mean, if you had all um, black people, you were able to get rid of the white people, well, there'd be the straight-nosed black people, and then there'd be the wider-nosed black people, and they'd be warring. We're in a world of duality. There's no way out of it. So, so what you're saying is they're trying, the years, to, they're trying to muddy the waters. They, they're trying to sort of dissolve those distinctions between good and bad. And they're trying to make everybody who's they, what, what? bad. You know, that's the message we get in the, yeah. you know, in pop culture today. It's through the music and the movies. You know, everybody is bad. Everyone what? has a demon inside. I mean, there's a song what? that goes, we all have demons inside us. Me, I don't. I don't know about right. you. Okay. No, <laughs> you know? I, don't think you, I don't think you do. So, <laughs> so there's been other answers. Uh, uh, I think the Muslim faith and, and Muhammad, his idea to be dualism was not allow an, uh, a dissenting opinion. So the whole motivation of Islam is peace. We want peace. And we can have peace if nobody dissents. So the problem with that solution is the same problem with Sebastian Sevi's solution in that it, it, it um, involves a very low vibration. Yeah. The evil vibration is the very low. It's, it's, it's going to, if it succeeds at ending duality, it's going to end it in such an ugly, disgusting kind of way that it's not going to be. <clears throat> the other solution, well, there's a lot of other solutions. Uh, the one solution that most people are familiar with in the West is the Christian solution. Now, Christ supposedly said, love everybody the way I love you. Now, if that happens, then that would mean that would end duality because we wouldn't see anybody as a, 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 just an, ex, uh, an extension of ourselves, something that we could love. We could understand why Sebastian Sevi wanted to do this. We could under we could understand the beauty. There's two beauties to this solution. One is you end up on a very high level consciousness. You're vibrating high. And I think what you've done is you've successfully completed the program in duality and you've worked your way out of it. The second thing that's beautiful about this is it works on an individual basis. One of the first people that called in with one of these solutions, uh, was a woman, um, I'm, I, actually I'm going to call her and try to get her, get her on Sunday. She um, was talking to me, they created such an interference that I could hardly uh, understand what she was saying, but I did. She says, I love my perps. Well, I thought, oh my God, how can that happen? I mean, I'm going to tell people to love your perps. These are the people that are shooting you with energy weapons, torturing you, making you wet yourself in a dentist's office. I mean, for heaven's sakes, how could that happen? But as, as we go through and we collect more of these options, they're not so far off. I mean, it's not so crazy. And the beauty of this option is it works for an individual. You don't have to have 5 million people working the same thing, like Sebastian Sevi does. You, you have one, and you 
can take it in, you can meditate, you can focus, you can focus on that beautiful flower and get into gratitude. Well, I mean, it's a way of individually ending the duality because really the battle is on in duality. They're bad guys. There's no doubt about it. They're the worst. I mean, they're worse than anything you can even imagine. I read stuff this year that I could never even imagine people could do to other people. And I heard a lot of it on techno crime fighters, actually. Yeah. But, uh, but, but fighting it doesn't dissolve it. It might, it might make them stronger because they're going to fight back. Mm -hmm. But it's like Chinese handcuffs. You, the mm -hmm. more you resist, the more it persists. And it, it gets you into that well, thing. So I think that in addition to doing that, uh, we really need to look for a way out. Yeah, Go yes, ahead, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And, you know, I think what you're saying, fighting it, I think exposing it, which is what we're doing, and what we do every day when we, you know, sign petitions, write letters, world, etc. I think those things are very necessary. We need to alert humanity to what is going on, you know. Uh, and First we need to know that, as you know, we've got a sex and death cult going on in these intelligence and security agencies. We've got psychopaths who are actually engaging in criminal activities against civilians. So that's very important, very essential. I think we do need to do that, especially, you know, as media, as people who are doing this podcast, you know, we need to do it. That's, that's very important. But there's the other side of it. And I think what you are actually talking about is instead of reacting, because what these guys are doing, uh, what the people who are targeted are experiencing is the constant constant harassment and constant enticement or incitement to react in a negative way or in an angry way or you know in a way of feeling outrage to react so it's that reactivity i think that you are speaking against instead of reacting which puts you in that negative low vibration space why don't you totally remove yourself keep doing what you're doing live your life then continue to fight against what's going on you know, in the public sphere, but at the same time, in the private and individual sphere, vibration space by focusing on something you love, something that mm -hmm. does it for you, you know, whether it's music or art, enter that very powerful high vibration space and exist in a state of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So when you, you know, it's yeah. like what we talked about, love what you love and put that love out into the world. I personally find it very difficult at this point in time to love my so-called uh, quote-unquote perps. I don't even use that word Absolutely. too much. Very hard for me when I look at my neighbors. I know my neighbors are doing this. I see them, my neighbors. They're living right next door. You know, I run into them all the time. Seeing weapons against me just shocks and horrifies and angers me. You know, so it's very hard for me to love my neighbors currently. And I can, you know, say that on national television to everybody in the world. Uh, quite freely. I, I really do not at this point in time love these freaky neighbors who are doing this to me. I don't love them. It's hard to send love to them. But I can go into my backyard and look at my flowers, water my garden, and enter a different state, you know, where I'm not angry anymore. Mm -hmm. Where I'm just happy. I'm just happy to be there enjoying the sunshine, you know, happy to have this moment to appreciate the beauty of the garden and see the butterflies, see the bees. Totally organic, I don't have any pesticides in my garden, so I actually do have butterflies and bees visiting the garden. I have hummingbirds visiting the garden. Lots of other kinds of birds, you know. So just looking at the birds and feeling happy is, is a good thing. And um, that's a feeling, I think, that you're talking about, the feeling of being at a higher vibration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you, uh, you'll be happy to read the... Uh, the chat room, they're on board. <laughs> they're, really, they're really on board. Uh, uh, Jeannie and Jane and Al. We had a few uh, other suggestions that I'll talk about in a minute. But I, yeah, I think it's, I, now, I ran into a, there, there's, a, there's a philosophy being pushed by a guy named Eckhart Tolle. Oh, yes. I used to read and listen to him a lot. 
so did I. I read his book over and over. I was trying. I was trying to look for some substance there. I couldn't find it, but mm. uh, knowing that he's uh, presented all the time on Oprah Winfrey's show, yeah. and he now performs with Jim Carrey, makes me know what side he's on. And I can see. Him. I understand what he's doing, and I understand focusing on in the now. It's problematic for me, but talks about that, yeah. Yeah, he says that you should focus on on you and being in the moment. And if you feel that there's something wrong out there, do. Does he really say that? It's the way you're viewing things. Yes, I've had people where in the city where we used to live would teach me that. See, uh, that sounds like mudding the waters too. Okay. It's like saying, oh, you be vulgar, be in the center. That's exactly right. And anything we try to do, <laughs> they're going to be there muddying the waters. I, I think that Tolly's correct in going in yourself and being being in the now. Now, I was always I was always confused on that. I mean, how much of the now is now? Is now now? When is you know, when's, when's now? Well, now it's just about to happen. Well, it happened already. Well, that's, you know, I'm confused with that. Do you mean in the day? Do you mean in that hour? Do you mean in the week? Do you, you know, whatever. Uh, there is only now. That's true. It's, it's, it's all has already happened. But I think that you have to go from being in, in, your, in your consciousness, from your observer point, 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 standpoint, and go into your Ramola standpoint. You know, I think it's the portal. That's why that's why we called it the portal. It's the portal between your higher self and your acting self. You still have to have access to your acting self. All the Ooh. all the guys in the Yunanda Yogananda book, they all can act in the physical world, but they could also escape the physical world. They could also be something that's other than their brain. Now, I don't, I don't mean to make it too confusing, but uh, I think there's a big role for us to play in the techno crime fighters, getting that information out. And honest to God, every time that we've, I'm deep into the rabbit hole, and we've been for 10 or 12 years, but every time we do one of these forums, I learn so much, and I go so much deeper. And watching you f four uh, ladies go deeper and deeper, and you guys are really spelunking the rabbit hole, I'll tell you. And you're throwing stuff out for everybody to consider. It's so important because why would you want to escape from duality if you love your servitude, if you like your iPod, if you like the fact that Uber comes and picks you up, if you like the fact that, you know, you've got 700 channels on your TV, you've got every sports game in the world on your TV, you've got... She came back from the United States. You can really get food there. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's all GMO, but it's, it's anything you want there. They want you to love your servitude. They want you yeah. to surrender willingly. But, if you're, but what I have now, and this is the most wonderful thing for a guy who studied consciousness most of his life, I have a whole bunch, I have millions of targeted individuals who really want to know. They want to know what's going on. They want to know what is this thing I'm, I'm experienced? Why am I trapped here? What, what, what part of me is here? What part of me is my beliefs? What part of me is, they, they want to know. And so I just, mm -hmm. as, as a guy who thinks he might know something about this, it's just like a beautiful opportunity for me. And I thank that this just joint investigation team for putting us on board and letting us share in this discovery with oh, you. Oh, I love it. No, we have to thank you, Paul and Lindsay, for you know stepping forward and offering a platform and providing that space, you know, for us to literally come here week after week, about what we know and speak out about the horror of what's going on. And um, yes. because there's, on the one hand, there's um, already been targeted who've been black blacklisted and watchlisted and very wrongfully. Um, we are trying hard to speak out in our own spheres. 
And what we run up against is this massive cover-up operation, the facade operation that the intel agencies are running by, you know, with the media calling TIs paranoid, insane, delusional. Don't listen to her. She's got a psychosis diagnosis. Well, who's given that person a psychosis diagnosis? It's the local psychiatrist who doesn't listen when somebody says, look, I'm suddenly being stalked. I appear to have become the target of covert government harassment. I'm being hit with electromagnetic signals in my body. And I wonder if I have an implant. So somebody comes along and tells a doctor, a medical doctor or a psychiatrist, a guy who spent what um, um, umpteen years going to medical school, educated and aware and informed, suddenly stares at this reporting victim and says, oh, you must be delusional. I cannot listen to you anymore. I cannot hear you anymore. I'm not going to take in anything you say about government harassment or government surveillance, which everybody with half a mind knows is going on. So then they start um, completely dropping their education down the toilet and behaving like idiots and slaves of the local intel agencies who have told them not to speak out, supporting victims. And let me underline the word victim. People who are being hit with these weapons are victims. You know, we are victims of the intelligence agencies. We are victims of the most deadly, the most sophisticated radiation technology. And so, because people who are being hit with these weapons are being, dis are being given a wrongful diagnosis by the local psychiatrist, I was happy to replay that diagnosis in public and say, oh, that person has a diagnosis of schizoid disorder, of schizoid affective disorder, or schizophrenia, and therefore cannot be believed. Be believed that person has no voice. That person has no voice in the public sphere. And that's precisely what they want, obviously, and this is why they're doing it. So they're shutting up vast numbers of reporting victims worldwide who are reporting assault with neuroweapons and, and with bioweapons, which is covert implantation. You know, where the clandestine services, where the CIA and the DIA are most definitely involved, because those are the jerks who break into houses and, and you know, use chloroform to drug people and then study. So I've been reporting on this for a very long time, you know, and I know how horrific the whole scenario is. But in any case, the reason I think that, to come back to the point really that I was trying to make, was that your forum is fantastic because it gives people who are targeted a very legitimate thing, a very legitimate voice, a legit, legitimized to speak out. It's, almost, it's, it's validation, it's external validation that this, this is victimhood, this is assault by intelligence, law enforcement and by security agencies. This has to be publicized and this has to be fought, it has to be challenged, people have to learn about it, et cetera, et cetera. So these are all the wonderful things that you know you guys do for us and for everybody, I think, in the whole world who's being wrongfully assaulted in these ways with these deadly silent and visible radiation weapons. Well, I, I, I think from the time we started playing with this topic was with Dr. Karlstrom, probably yeah, a little over seven. here. What? Even before it was seven. Oh, Although yeah, we were seven. ready to actually acknowledge it was so prevalent at that time. We thought it was unique to seven, even though she was saying, I have this friend and this friend and this friend, I oh, want to wow. interview them. And that was a couple of years ago, but it was after so many interviews with Eric Karlstrom on on topics even before this that led into this that really pulled us into this arena but it's but what, I, what i want to say is is that the response the chat room we have such a wonderful chat room they somehow they're able to free themselves up on this really inconvenient thursday morning and they come on and they talk to us and they write us and they watch these things and they respond and the response we're getting this is totally amazing we've been probably doing this for three or four years and we used to get unanimously you guys are whack jobs you're crazy you're wh what universe are you from not anymore since techno crime fighters the joint I investigation team started off. Go ahead. 
Oh, no, finish your yeah, thought. You because actually, that so is credibility. Did the four of you <laughs> on the joint investigate? Yeah, I think you actually gave us credibility because before that, people just really saw us as whack jobs because we were talking about areas that, that most people weren't familiar with. In fact, okay. we did a show years back on gaslighting, which is one of their major tools for keeping yeah. the truth hidden, right? I mean, if, if somebody's telling the truth and you can say, oh, they're crazy, then nobody listens. So gaslighting, which they really use on targets, is a major way that they try to keep the truth hidden from the rest of the people. So, so we start talking with the crime fighters. And uh, no matter what rabbit hole they go down, they go into stuff that have, has been uncovered. Yeah. It'll all lead back to pedophilia. It'll all lead back to the Freemasons. It'll all lead back. And so people are seeing these pathways. And, and honestly, I think they're waking up. I know that uh, uh, our comments are just really, really fantastic. Oh, not all of them. I mean, you, you still have mm -hmm. the people sitting in the office that get paid to, to tell us we're crazy. Uh, but we know, we, we, even, we even can tell by the, uh, I'll tell you who's taught us a lot on that is uh, Catherine. You can tell by the, the title, you can tell by who it is, you can, I mean, you can see right, you can see right through them. But it's, it's like uh, the awakening that I'm seeing is so explosive that if I were, uh, one of the followers of Sebastian Seve, some one of these, uh, I don't, I don't know, a, a Clinton or a Trump or a Bush or a Rothschild, I would, I would think that uh, they better lock the lid really quickly, because oh no, they can't the lock the lid. It's not possible anymore. I, I do see what you see, Paul, but I also see that they can't stop it anymore. I think we're winning. I think so too. I think so too. There's, yeah. It's it's got to end. It can't it can't continue this way. It's got to change, and the change. I it's can, happening I right here. Right. I think the change is happening every time somebody like us makes the you know takes a stand and says no more. I'm sick of it. I mean, literally, this is why I decided to do podcasts of my own. I decided I'm really sick of it. I've been writing articles for three years on my website. I've been writing to state reps. I've been writing to senators. You know, I've been asking what the heck is going on. Why am I? Why do I appear to be listed? Why am I being stopped? Happens. You know, I wrote to the CIA, the FBI, everybody. I wrote to the local police and the Massachusetts State Police, etc. And I get back this nonsense about oh, you know. And I did FOIA requests on all of these, and I get back this nonsense saying, sorry, Glomar responds. We cannot confirm, we cannot deny, we can't tell you if you're on a list, blah, blah, blah. What is that? I'm yeah. sorry, that, that's not normal. I, I don't care what you call it. You can call it surveillance, you can call it a surveillance state or a police state, but that's not normal. When somebody asks you a basic question, why am I being uh, watched, investigated? Why are you going around telling my neighbors, et cetera? You can't give me a straight answer. It's not normal. So I'm sick of it. I'm sick of being assaulted in my own house. I'm sick of being sleep deprived. So, and I know that there are thousands behind me, so I just decided to heck with it. I'm going to start running podcasts. I'm going to start interviewing people. I'm going to document this atrocity to kingdom come, you know? Great. You know, your, 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 your writing is magnificent, as much as I can tell. And, but uh, the people don't read. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we started a couple of years ago. We read an article, think, oh man, people have to read this. How do you get them to read that? Well, what we've done is we've put a couple of them into videos. Uh, one of them called Six Deceptions Necessary for Agenda 21 has almost a quarter million views on our channel. And oh, wow. the, minute, the minute we put something up, it's mirrored all over the place. Wonderful. So I'm Paul, sure I'm going to have to ask you to put my videos up on your channel because I can tell you I'm being incredibly suppressed like you would not believe so i get very few subscribers very few views in my podcast so i don't know how, how to promote them i don't know how to put them out there you know, i'd love to have some tips or just hand them to you feel free to do whatever you want with them well we'll put well we certainly put them up yeah uh, we're trying to migrate to dtube 
Well, actually, we just got, we have a presence on Steam it. We're going to try VTube. I've done VidMe. I put things up on VidMe okay. because I think our days of YouTube is the big, it's the big fish. If you want to get the people, you have to do YouTube. Yeah. But also, what we're going to do, link, we're going to link everything on YouTube to these other channels. Uh, so if they take the channel down or they start censoring, we've already got one strike. Oh, yes. And uh, oh, we're probably it won't gonna... be long before they take us down. But until they do, we'll keep posting, which we're, we have to go through a long process to download what you post on your channel, download mm -hmm. it, and then re upload it back to our channel. And it's quite a lot of, it's very time consuming and a lot of work. But I'm trying to keep that up. Meanwhile, you know, we'll use our other formats and we'll start trying to get a presence on DTube. It's quite a learning process. Uh, we set up the Steemit account a couple of years ago or a year ago and I couldn't find the password. So ah. I just spent two days trying to figure out how to get back in so that I could try to get the DTube platform going. But we're yeah. working on it and we'll just keep persevering so we can keep sharing information that's wonderful i feel the same kudos to you for persisting Lindy, because i know exactly i've had some of those issues you know downloading takes forever but mm -hmm. sometimes it seems to work you know it's because they are sort of sabotaging all the time sitting on your browser right that's right Lindy, tell them about uh, embedding oh well i just learned this actually i i pulled up the how how to do this and um, mm -hmm. I didn't realize, because I always just go in and copy the URL from the top um, search bar. But if you go to share, okay. then there's an option to embed, and then you copy that link. Oh. So I did not know all this time that I should have been copying the embed link. And um, that's the way we now yeah, post. You mean when you have a YouTube yes. video playing, you, you put your cursor on it and do a right click, you get those options. Is that what you're talking about? So. Right at the bottom of your at the bottom of your YouTube video that you want to put on another platform, if you if you click the share button, and then you get an option to embed, and you click embed, then you take that URL. Okay. And I haven't done that up till now. I think I needed to all along, so I've just learned that. So, you know, anyone who's listening to these forums who's tech savvy and wants to volunteer to help us, we could definitely use your help because this is, a, you know, a lot of work. And, you know, for me, like, having grown up at a time when we didn't have computers, learning this tech stuff is much harder than it is for young people who've started from day one in school learning how to use computers. So. They're so much more tech savvy than we are, and we could use your help. So, anyone who wants to volunteer, please get in touch with me. <laughs> so, yes. Pete's guitar lessons TV is saying it's easy peasy. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe for you, Pete. Yeah, but Pete, you're probably me. 25 years old and grew up yeah. with this stuff. Yeah, this this whole world of video tech is a whole other world, I think. At least that's yes, what I'm learning. It is. And, and, and the idea is to pull ourselves more and more out of it and into real life and not get yeah. so sucked into it. And yet it's the tool that we need to share information right now. So we'll use mm -hmm. it while we can because I think it could be going away. And when it does go away, things will be wonderful again, actually. You know, it'll go away when it's time for us to re-engage with real life and not virtual life through a computer screen mm -hmm. yes and you know right now the big fight is actually letting people know that if we keep going down this track we are headed straight toward virtual reality augmented reality and literally being subsumed into ai and into supercomputers um and becoming cogs so we kind of do need to make that but we also need to let people know what's going on you know so this moment in time doing these podcasts and that's important. That's what we'll do for now. But then we'll get our superpowers back and we'll be able to communicate <laughs> telepathically. And we won't need the computers anymore. Yeah, yeah. we'd all um, they're, they're, probably yeah. by the 
I, I would like to say that as people wake up, when you first open your mind to these realities, then there are big breakthroughs. I mean, there's some, I think I'm going to call them when I write about this windfalls. When you break through that, like when you realize that NASA is totally a mind control operation. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that they say that isn't a lie. <laughs> wow. Yeah, um, there's, yeah. there's all these things now that you can that that you can discard and you can down these different rabbit mm -hmm. holes. Trying to think of another one. Oh, the 911 is the big one. Oh boy. Once yeah. you realize that that wasn't done by the by a bunch of uh uh, I was going to say dancing is really covers. but I guess that's not what I was. That's not what I wanted to reach for. <laughs> it was. It was done by the dancing is uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, once you break you break through these, and then, but but that's see that we've been watching the awakening for a while, and now it's so beautiful because you know you talk. I really worry about the social justice warriors because. Boy, they've, been t they've, they've lost their ability to reason and think, and they're anti free speech, mm. which is. I mean, talk they've, about they've been, they've, been mis they've been misled. I mean, they've been so um, sort of really taken done. by the hand and led down the wrong path. Yeah, exactly. But I've seen them instances where they start to wake. Mm -hmm. They do it just the same as everybody else does. They wake up just like everybody else, and they're they're just That's as uh, they're just as avid researchers. So, so I don't worry about that. I think that the the people that should be worried about the awakening are the uh, are the Satanists because their idea of how they're going to get out of the matrix is just not going to work. We're going to go. No, it's not. Life. And you know. I think from what I'm seeing, they still seem to be laboring under the delusion that they can get where they want to go by continuing to torment the rest of the population. You know, because they're creating stress yeah. and trauma and all that's good for them, etc. And vibration and so forth. Yesterday I went to the gym and, you know, they love to lay COVID uh, communications around me. I took my daughter to the Y to, to, for her swim practice. And, you know, so uh -huh. they literally, I'm surrounded by very uh, pointed. Uh, communications around me and I frequently ignore it but every now and then something catches my eye so they've lately started to surround me with Indian people <laughs> right so because you know, so all of a sudden I've got Indian people who are teenagers Indian people who are young mothers and they're all around me so I saw a, 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 a small group a couple young boys and a young woman you know, teenagers or a little over, and they had one of them had a had a T-shirt and prominently displayed on the back it said, "We're all in this together." Oh. <laughs> and I thought, I don't know. I wonder if that's like we're all we all have demons inside us. So I'm not too sure what to think of that precisely, but it's almost like a little mm -hmm. note from the other side to say, "As in the bad guys, we're all in this together." No, that's not the message I want to hear, you know? It's like, we're not all in this together in the same way. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hi, Millicent. Interesting. Hi, Millicent. Hi, Millicent. Y'all don't want to hear about my in my day. Oh, no, what happened? Oh. So where's Karen? Um, Karen has not been able to join us today. She did tell us she was doing something this morning, so maybe it kind of consumed her and she's really busy. A week, we started late, because she was major sabotage. So we started around, I think, 12 Eastern, and now I'm looking at the clock, it's 1.36. So I guess we're heading toward the closing end of our show at this point, but we're so glad to see you here. Well, thank you. It's, it's glad to, good to be here at last. Good. It's good to have you here. Hi, Mindy. Hi, uh, Millicent. I'm so happy to see you. It's been a long time. Your hands. I'm so, glad to see you back. Thank you. thank you. There was a suggestion earlier on in the uh, somebody, oh, I know who it was. 
Marina Pierce said that we should get in touch with a man named Trey Gowdy. He's, he's a congressman. He's a congressman. Oh, yes, Trey and, Gowdy. Uh, yes, we did. He was, he was the guy who, uh, who actually headed the investigation on Benghazi. And through Benghazi, yeah. he traced back to all of the Clinton's emails. Now, he was uh, courageous, forthright. I mean, he stood up against the deep state, which is the Clintons. And uh, he and a man named uh, Javits, Chavez, 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 Chavez. Uh, were really uh, instrumental in, uh, I think, uh, really uh, exposing a lot of the stuff. And so if somebody out there knows how to get in touch with him, uh, he might be able to help. I, I'd like him to know what's going on. If he doesn't, I mean, he should uh, be on Ramola, but no, no Ramola D's channel, all the work that she's doing. He should know that stuff. Now, whether he's willing to be, you know, it takes a lot. I to think maybe what I can do. Yes, I know. Maybe what I can do, uh, Paul, is start tweeting to some of these people, you know, tweeting our links of all our podcasts, Technocrime, as well as some of my podcasts, you know, to people like Trey Gowdy and names anymore, but whoever's running the Senate Intelligence Committee, etc. And actually, I was thinking we should actually um, get together and go down to Congress and uh, try to set up a meeting with these guys, you know. With the Senate Intelligence Committee. Mm -hmm. I think that I'm, would be great. I'm Smilison. Yeah. He's, he, I think, we is South Carolina. Before, remember. Did we? Right, yes. Millicent had some ideas about this, right? About meeting congressmen, right? I did. In fact, uh, we may, if we could play that, it was a four minute, just over four minute. Uh, YouTube video that shows Trey Gowdy uh, questioning a DHS employee about uh, process. Mm -hmm. Y'all, that was really, really a, an intense uh, questioning of that person. She couldn't answer, I don't think, any of the questions. But he brought up the fact that those of us on the list uh, were put there without our knowledge. He asked her, How can we get off the list? He also um, Question us specifically about the uh, First Amendment rights, Second Amendment rights. He mentioned the Eighth Amendment rights and how they're being violated. So he really would be someone if we could get him on to uh, to interview, as well as you know, it, maybe it would help everyone if we would even play that little uh, YouTube clip at some point, so that people can see where he stood on it. Right. Mm -hmm. on you know, he's he's such a hero of mine that. My first influence, instinct is to try to keep him safe. How could he help us without sacrificing mm. himself? Because um, I don't know. He's 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 bright. He's aggressive, and he's really. I think he has his heart in the right place. I don't know him personally, so I could be really misled. Mm. But I used to just watch his interviews on the Benghazi to inspire me. You know that there are some people left in government that haven't been eaten alive by the system. You're right, and there are some people. I think Dennis Kucinich is another really sort of morally upright and upstanding kind of congressman who did a great deal. He's the guy who put forth the Space Weapons Act as a bill, which of course was shot down. It never became an act, but that was about stopping the to assault people. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, but, but I think he was he was also unfortunately oh his family was unfortunately targeted by these intelligence. Well they they did away with his uh, district. They did away with his district. Yes. And uh, the way the story goes about him and uh, he and Obamacare, he was against Obamacare 
and told mm -hmm. Obama took him for a ride in Air Force One. <laughs> it reminds me of what they used to do in Vietnam to, to the Viet Cong. They take him up in a plane and ask him questions. Mm. Got him so, uh, on, a, on an aircraft. Closed door, but one door open. Mm. You know, right. that's what they used to do in Vietnam. So the guys that came back would tell me. Oh my goodness. Anyway, yeah. So anyway, he's, I think he's an amazing guy. And, uh, of, you know, I've been down this rabbit hole for a long time and I've, heard very few things disparaging about Dennis. He seems to be an ups, upstanding guy and has always been uh, someone who I look to for right answers, especially in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So he and Trey, well, I, I mean, that would be, that would be great. Absolutely, yes. Well, I think it's time in this country to do that kind of thing again. We have to, men and women, exactly what's going on, and we have to demand change. And not just change in, you know, 50 years down the road, but I mean change right now. I mean rip open secrecy right now. Stop this assault of women and men right now with your deadly radiation weapons. This is radiation rape, you know, what they are doing. Mm -hmm. It is. It, it, go ahead. Awesome. Um, well, my, my thought processes have been being uh, brutally attacked uh, this today in particular. Um, Lynn Sagala stated several times between 2006, 7 and, and 2010 or 11 that we should hold our public servants accountable for what is happening to us. And that was, you know, successfully done in Richmond, California, as well as Berkeley, California. They were the first ones to pass the Space Preservation Act. Uh, however, in small towns like my own, I did try to go to my my city council. Well, Robola, they've done it again from our end. Can you hear? No. We can't hear a thing, Robola. I'm here. I just didn't hear Millicent. I can't hear Millicent. But, oh, and yeah, now she's, she's off. off. Now she's off. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. She must have been ready. She was talking about Lynn Sagala. So, so Lynn Sagala's letter is on my okay. website. It's, um, you know, talking about the reality of targeting and talking about the reality of these assaults on people with psychotronic weapons. Oz, so this is contravening and running counter to and um, oh she's back excellent i was totally disconnected wow i do know in louisville kentucky they have a fairly open uh city council and and connie marshall who lives there and has been a target for many years and has fought the system publicly for many years is she says she goes every, every time she's allowed to and and has her five minutes to speak to the council about what's being done to her about what the um, technology is about and that kind of thing. So I, I believe it behooves all of us to go to our city council meetings uh, to the agenda. I think that's an excellent thought, Millicent. And I think actually we should um, explore that and actually find out a little bit how to do it and let people know, sort of just give them a set of instructions. One, two, three, four, five. Do this, this, and this and go and present your views present this information, maybe give them a statement as well, a general statement, you know, about how people are being targeted in, in your county the and the, what the weapons are and, um, you know, the effects of it. Person? Maybe that I'll will help. Contact Connie Marshall. What I found out is the liberties that she have in Kentucky, um, as close as that Commonwealth is, I don't have here in Murray County. When Connie was fighting cases in court, she was able to take her documents and log them without a judge's permission here in, in this county. I couldn't log anything without the judge's permission first, where you can't get to the judge, you know. So I, I will contact Connie and ask her to give me um, a, a listing of what she's done mm -hmm. so that we can at least know what should be able to be done mm -hmm. in, in any city. 
Would Connie be interested in coming on our show and talking to us about it? I will ask her again. She's a very vocal woman, very able woman. But she um, obviously, like most other targets, have developed a, um, I guess, sort of a, a distrust oh, for yeah. the PR yeah, community. I would definitely ask her because she would be a great person to she share. Would be, she would be. I'm very keen on, you know, finding everybody among us who wants to speak out and can't speak out and has a powerful voice and you know giving them a space and a platform to, to just express themselves and to put their voice out there in the community so anytime to do a podcast with me or to come on you know our forum right here and talk to all of us openly that would be fantastic that would be great i'll, I'll talk to her about that wonderful thanks melissa so, I actually, uh, city council members and, and provided them to them that gave the details of, of what other uh, cities have done as far as implementing a, a resolution against space-based weapons. I, I gave them documents that were signed by former uh, military commissioned officers against torture and that kind of thing. Um, okay. Provided that for them. I've never been able to get back in there to ask like that face to face yeah I, but i think we need to revive certain of these initiatives you know to get certain people to pay attention and to start taking action right now because this is we've come to a point of no return and i believe that enough of us are now learned enough that we can begin to challenge these positions you know elections come around every year for whatever part of them and perhaps some of us should, uh, you know, should challenge some of these positions and, and apply to run for them ourselves. That's what kind of Marshall did in the city of Louisville. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Also, especially with uh, county sheriffs, every county in the state has sheriff's department, and that's an elected official. And uh, I think a platform could be anti uh, I think it would have to be a woman and it would have to be standing up for the rights of women against sexual assault, uh, electronic harassment. I think uh, I think that would make a great campaign. Now you'd be running against the big money. Uh, but I think in a small county, you, know, you, might, you might be successful. But I think it would have to be a woman. Well, you know, there are enough uh, former military, you know, uh, veterans who are female that would have some background in, in weapons and that kind of thing, and, and, and even in military policing. So that really is a good idea, Paul, and perhaps we could talk some of them into running. I know a few of them. One was a captain. Yeah, one... yeah. yeah what... right. and they could start the camp. They could start their campaign that... on techno crime fighters. Oh, that's good. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, when you mention military women, Millicent, the thought strikes me that perhaps some military women in positions of power, because there are many women these days who are occupying some of those higher positions, perhaps they need to know what's being done with these weapons on American women. A podcast yeah, that we did together. Right. Absolutely. There's a senator in New York who has actually been collecting evidence from women who have been sexually assaulted. Uh, it seems maybe by well by military men in particular, but I think it's women who are in the military versus civilians as well. Uh, I've contacted her office before and was kind of um, pushed to the side, but I was told that she was looking in particular for military women who had been sexually assaulted during their military career. She was really trying to expose it. Great, that's wonderful. But you're right, that's inside the military. It's what military men have done to military women. Right? Yeah, here we're talking yeah. here we're talking about what military men and military women, intelligence men and intelligence women, security men and security women are doing yeah. to American women and American men. The yeah, right. a military woman would be the same as a military man. To get into the military, you have to go through a brainwashing, uh, you know, they call it basic training, but it's basically uh, brainwashing. And also they're massively injected. I would imagine that now, I would imagine the last 20 years, they've all been 
pretty heavily chipped. So, uh, oh. so you're running a risk with somebody that's been in the military, but everybody, everybody's been chipped by this point. I think so. I think that's actually true. And I think many people actually say that, that everyone's been chipped. You know, it's very interesting if you watch that Vice documentary with that guy who was clearly talking to a bunch of um, people who are quote unquote TIs who are know that they're, they've been uh, watch listed and are being hit with weapons. Um, um, the bug detector went right up against his the, the host neck. It kind of beeped and proved that there was a chip in his body and this guy immediately said, no, that must be a blip. That must be something wrong with the equipment. That, 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 oh, that may be something natural in my body that's giving it off. Chips are becoming yeah. natural now. Good idea to say, think of it that way. But you know, I think that actually yeah. proves that possibly everybody is chipped. I told you, I read yeah. uh, that by May of 2005, they expected that everyone in the nation would be chipped. Yes, yeah. actually yeah. there are. And isn't it, which one of it, I forget, was it Representative Jim Guest who talked about how very chips are being used to track Americans? And he was um, out in Congress asking that this program be stopped. Jim Guest did write a letter. and. And even before that, 1997, John Glenn uh, introduced oh. the Human Research Protection Act to Congress, asking Congress to forbid the use of, of he said things are being put in their bodies. Uh, and he mentioned the, the, the gamut of the family. He said when they go to doctors or to, to clinics, uh, he said it may do them harm and it may not. And then he went on and explained that he himself had allowed himself to receive this he didn't say chip. He, he didn't say implant. He just, I allowed myself to receive this uh, when I was going up into space. So who mm -hmm. were interpreting what he was saying actually said he was talking about microchipping. And he was asking that Congress not allow people to be chipped without their knowledge and without their consent. This again was 1987, and it was the Human Research Protection Act. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And you know, I'm reading a couple of military documents now, and I'm hopefully going to do a, an info talk on my podcast soon about it. Um, well, literally, what they're calling them is, they don't call them microchips, you're right. They call them radio frequency locator devices, RFLD. That's very strategist from about 40 years ago, from the 70s or 80s, writing about looking forward to a time, which, by the way, we have now arrived at, which is our current moment, um, where and where everybody might need radio frequency located devices and where people might previously object to having any kind of tracking device put in their body might need to be educated and moved in their thinking toward seeing the need for it. In other words, brainwash. This is how it's all been coming down the pike. You know, it's been coming to us from these military strategists. And if you go back and of course unpack that as to where it's coming from, I think you can go right back to the global totalitarian plan that they've had for everybody all along. That's being played out, you know, in these military strategies now. Very speak that we see. So because the way they start documents is almost like the world is changing, the world is becoming a terrible place, it's becoming a nightmare, it's becoming a terror zone, people are behaving, people are getting more and more ruthless against each other, and we have to step in and move to new forms of warfare, you know, cyber warfare and radio frequency warfare, et cetera, et cetera. So they try to justify and rationalize everything they do. And this bogus way. Every war has been started. Isn't that how the United States has found their way into wars in other countries? There was always something that came up that we couldn't handle, and they needed our assistance. And, and we're dropping bombs because it's such a humanitarian thing to do. This is humanitarian bombing. Right. 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 Just like the Tuskegee Sickness experience, uh, experiment found its way to Guatemala. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. 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 But but we're at the stage right now where it's really important to get this information out. And you 
uh, you two really have done your research and you can come up with things like the Tuskegee experiment. Uh, that was the first atrocity in the United States that I think a medical atrocity. I think it happened after World War II? No, no, it didn't. It started much before because they had given people syphilis. And uh, 1945, they cured syphilis with uh, penicillin. Right. But they wouldn't allow the people in the study to take penicillin because it would cure the syphilis. It would ruin their study. So uh, that's the kind of stuff they've been doing all along. Uh, you have the Phoenix program, you have MKUltra. It's got to stop. People have got to wake up and realize what's going on. But but that's the stage we're in. We're you guys are in guard. You're you're uncovering. I think things. you're right. And I think you're right. I think it's important to uncover those things and actually go back in time and show the history and relate the history to the present moment because there's a straight line between the past and the present. Absolutely. And most people and there's don't know. a straight line yeah. between what they're doing to you guys and what they're going to be doing to everybody else with smart meters, those little iPods, iPads. iPhones. I mean, they're, they're, they're getting the matrix up around everybody. Yeah. So they can be given the same kind of uh, treatment that you're getting. And, and that's going to happen. Fact, more and more in people. fact, Paul, I, I actually think it's already happening. People just don't know it. I can tell you when I drive around, um, this area, which is Quincy, where I live, and Milton, which is the neighboring city in the Boston area, all over the Boston area that I've been driving around lately, I've been noticing this. There are these big vans parked everywhere. There are trucks parked everywhere. And these are the same kinds of vans and trucks that come and park on my street or around the street. A lot of them are fake utilities, fake services, fake landscaping, heating, you name it, they've got it, you know. Basically, they've got an army of people who've been trained in these other services and who are now running these so-called front businesses who carry directive energy weapons in their vans and their vehicles and are using them to target everybody in the neighborhood. So what I would suggest really is to this has suddenly developed, you know, a sudden ache in their left toe or sudden ankle pain or sudden persistent right knee pain or left knee pain or a sudden liver condition or a sudden heart condition, a kidney condition. Well, actually, I, w I would suggest it's not old age. It's not your genetics in the slightest. It's because somebody in your neighborhood is pointing weapons into your house. And you could be, I think, is being targeted in different ways. So some of us are being given these diseases. Some people are developing autoimmune diseases all over the place, like lupus. And um, what is that chronic fatigue syndrome and myalgia, fibromyalgia and shingles? My dad has been complaining of shingles all of a sudden. Wow. How does this suddenly happen to somebody who is perfectly healthy? So I'm sure there's a medical reason because we're living in the age of possible medical deniability as well. But because we are targeted and we are being hit with these weapons, I think, and we can see what's going on a little bit more clearly than others can because we are being subjected to this. Yes, that what's being what's happening here to us in intense fashion is happening to others as well in less intense fashion, you know, a little bit less on the scale. But people are being hit. I think everybody's being hit in their own homes. And it's important, Ramola, to tell people right. that uh, keeping up with the inflammation rate in their blood is one way to track the uh, the assaults actually, uh, because I've been mine have been being tracked for the last five years. They take blood, they check the C protein reactor and the sed sedentary rate. And those two together show the rate of infl inflammation, amount of inflammation in the body. And mine has been way over normal for, for several years, yet it does not show any rheumatoid arthritis. So obviously I've got the proof of why I'm inflamed all over my body, but many other people don't. And they do indeed get... Uh, diagnoses that lend themselves to autoimmune diseases. The other thing is um, the thyroid. Lots and lots and lots of people are having thyroid issues. And a mm -hmm. neurosurgeon specialist gave me the paper that described the thyroid goiters 
are caused by toxins in the body, not by um, things that are a normal body breakdown, but by actual toxins. And boy, we can surely acclaim, attest to the exposure to the toxins of EMF all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. If I we had a we had Mindy's son come down and visit us, and she went up to the U.S. and got some information on loving your servitude. And, and I'm not speaking to targeted individuals; I'm talking to everybody out there who's living in the uh, loving your servitude vein. Here's what's happening to you. You're being co-opted by your pleasure. Oh, you work all day. Yes, it's hard. You need to come home and relax. You watch TV. TV is nothing but mind control. You're in your office all day and you come home. You're in Wi-Fi the entire time. Do some study on Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is breaking your body apart. It's not even 5G yet. It's just Wi-Fi. And then I've noticed that they they really are enslaved to those, oh, are they iPods? I can't, I, can't, I call them iPhones. I call them scrying mirrors. Look up scrying mirror, I'll give you some information. Uh, okay. And they can summon people, they can build things, they can get an Uber car just by push, pushing that. You go home, you watch TV, you can watch any sport being played anywhere in the world. You can get any kind of home-brewed beer. Do you think it's because they like you that they're giving you these things? Do you think it's because uh, you're just a good, honest American? No, it's the trap. It's the tender trap. You're being lulled into this. Oh, we'll put a smart meter on your phone, on your house, so they can tell you whether you need milk. And they can show some ads on your smartphone, whether you need milk. They're wiring you into the system. Can't you see they're wiring you into the system? Stop the system any way you can. Get rid of any little thing. Now, Millicent, uh, Ramola and I talked about staying in touch with um, the internet, staying on, trying to spread the word, trying to wake people and trying to develop people. Uh, but you, you've got to realize that it's growing up all around you. You're not going to be able to escape. I know that when she travels in the U.S., she must have an iPhone. You cannot get around it. Well, I went back in 2013. Renting a car without an iPhone was a major problem for me. Paperwork? Ah, paperwork. Oh, don't you see it's a trap? And the biggest word for trap is upgrade. Oh. They're going to upgrade you right into your servitude. Please, please wake up. Start moving out. Get rid of that stuff. Get as far from that as you can because there's going to be a time when you can't. So that was, I, I don't know. Yeah, Something the Millicent said somebody's... triggered. Yeah, the... Somebody wants to do a video on that, and I think that's a great idea. We will because we're running out of time now, and I know we have to sign off. So you can go pick up your daughter. We don't want her to be waiting there for you. That's right. Yes, absolutely. I know. So we're going to have to sign off. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. And, um, if you guys want to do the sign off, and I'll say goodbye to everybody. And yeah, for the technical yeah. No, that's up to you at Thank your you end. Later. So we'll all say goodbye until next time. And you. And it was great to be with you all, including everyone in the chat room. Thank you, chat room. Thank you were so wonderful. Here. I wish I could talk to each of you individually. Uh, you're so wonderful. You come up every year or every every weekend. You gave give some great uh, insights. I wish we could. We should just do it. One. We should do a techno time fighter with just the chat. <laughs> no agenda. Just yeah, we'll do chat. that sometime. All right then. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you. See you next time.